PFT OT, PFT PM, PFT whatever, wherever, however. Some extra things that Chris Sims and I didn't get to on the Thursday edition of the show. We had fun for the past couple of hours at uh, talking a lot about the NFC North, their draft needs, and the best players from that division. And a lot about the Tom Brady interview with Howard Stern for two hours on uh, on Wednesday. And, you know, after hearing that and looking at everything he had to say, like, What more does Tom Brady have to, like, who would even want to interview him at this point, right? Like, what more can you get out of Tom Brady that Howard Stern hasn't gotten out of him? No, you're right. I mean, well, we've never really heard Brady open up like that at all, other than, like, maybe that series that came out, you know, Tom versus Time. You know, that's why it's just so intriguing of a listen altogether. You know, yes, he's been in New England where they trained him to be a robot. I'm sure he's been a little reluctant to do interviews like that because he just knows the New England culture doesn't love that. Uh, but you're right. There ain't much more to cover. He kind of gave it, he gave it, gave it all to us. Well, you know what? I may make a request for him uh, to see if we can get him on the show. What the hell? He did it three years ago after Super Bowl 51. We had him for like 20 minutes uh, on a, like a Tuesday morning, not long after the Super Bowl. So, well, well, hey, if he's ready to talk, let's give him the platform. I mean, what else is going on right now? You know, that's a, after you. the draft. After the draft, things are really going to slow down, and maybe that's when we start lining up some of these guys who uh, otherwise aren't doing anything. Although I know they're going to be trying to work out at home, but they're going to have a lot more free time than they would in a normal year. So maybe they want to come promote something or talk about something or, you know, just uh, hang out for a few minutes and uh, have some fun. Maybe talk about them some things uh, that they otherwise wouldn't be talking about. All right, here's what we're going to talk about. A report from the dog that is owned by my internet son, PFT commenter. Chris, I don't know how much you follow this, but Leroy Insider the dog owned by PFT commenter, from time to time breaks news on Twitter. Now, I I will say this. Leroy is not batting a 1,000. So I'm always a little (laughs) bit nervous. I'm always a little bit nervous when I I see something Leroy reports, like the Bears are having dinner with Eli Manning. Uh, That was one that was was posted by Leroy a few weeks back. But, But this one caught my attention because it's not implausible. Leroy Insider tweeted last night that uh, there are rumors that Rob Gronkowski is going to come out of retirement and join Tom Brady with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, for starters, that can't happen without the Patriots' approval because he's on the Patriots' reserve retired list. They'd have to trade him or they'd have to cut him before he could become a Buccaneer. But, But assuming they could work out the transactional side of it, could you see Rob Gronkowski choosing to come back and play football with Tom Brady in Tampa? I could I could see him thinking about it for sure. I you know again, you know all right. Two things that jump out to me here. You know, one just watching what was that WrestleMania two weeks ago, or just seeing little snippets of it, or maybe that was Sunday. I can't even remember now. The days are running together. He does look like he's put on a little bit more weight, like he's been lifting weights a little lately. So that you know, I know he's probably doing it for the the WrestleMania show, but nonetheless might have got him in the mode a little bit to be like, oh, man, I missed working out. This feels good. Okay, I feel pretty good. And, of course, training for that event in itself maybe, you know, could have ignited his fire a little bit. And then also, hey, listen, just like Brady kind of being worn out by the New England way, I I wouldn't be shocked if that's what happened to the Gronk a little too, where it just is, you know, the grind of New England caught up to him, let alone the physical toll. And he loves Brady. We know that. And, you know, they have good tight ends in Tampa. They can make a trade happen if they want it. It's interesting, nonetheless. I don't think it's crazy. Yeah, you could send O.J. Howard or Cameron Brait to the Patriots for the rights to Rob Gronkowski. It's that simple if Gronk wants to do it. And let's also be realistic about it, because you and I were quick to call BS on the idea that the Buccaneers didn't talk to Tom Brady prior to the opportunity for them legally to do so under NFL rules. Surely they were talking to Brady. And would it shock anyone to know whether or not uh, Bruce Arians, the coach of the Buccaneers, has maybe had some conversations with Gronk, right? And that wouldn't surprise me either. And for Gronk, Bruce Arians is the perfect coach. Gronk had gotten worn out by Bill Belichick. Here comes Bruce Arians with a drink in one hand, and he's dropping F-bombs, and he's got the (laughs) Kangol hat on. This guy's cool in the eyes of Rob Gronkowski. This is the kind of guy that Gronk would come out of retirement for, especially if it puts him back together with his good buddy Tom Brady. I mean, it makes a ton of sense on the surface, and if 
they could work out this transaction. If there's a way to make that deal happen, I, it, it would not shock me. We spent so much time last year speculating on whether or not Gronk would unretire and play with Brady with the Patriots. Obviously, he ultimately didn't. I think now we're going to be on this idea of whether or not there's going to be a path for Gronk back to Brady, to Tampa, out of New England. It'd be fascinating if it happens. Yeah, it would be fascinating. And, you know, like, I mean, I think we made a lot of good points to why it, it, it you know, is not totally out of left field. I think there's a lot of things that match up that you go, huh, that's a positive. I can see that happening. And you're right. You know, Arians, I, I just think Arians would be a welcome refreshment to guys like Gronk and Brady. And Brady, Brady will probably be able to even help sell it like that to Gronk if he is thinking about it. Uh, but be interesting. Certainly something to keep an eye on here because, hey, we do know this too. The Patriots have a need at the tight end position. And, of course, you know, there's nobody that knows how to use the tight end as good as New England, so they might see value in just letting him go and get getting a younger prospect like a Brader or O.J. Howard. Who do you want if you're Bill Belichick, Cameron Brader or O.J. Howard? Yeah, that's a really tough one. I mean, Braid is a little bit more consistent. O.J. Howard is, you know, a physical freak in a lot of ways and has some top-end talent, but just has not played to the level that, of course, the first-round draft pick, which we would expect. You know, I think Cameron Brate's a little bit more of a sure thing right now and a little bit better of an all-around football player. Uh, yeah, I think, it would, I think I would probably favor Brate uh, in a close one. Yeah, Brate uh, is a guy who emerged and was having some good seasons before Howard came along. He had 680 receiving yards in 2016 and eight touchdowns. Then Howard came along in 2017. As a rookie, Howard had 432, and Brate that year had 591. But Howard has been more productive the past two years, and last year it was 459 receiving yards for Howard, only 311 for Brate, but Brate is a guy they recently redid a contract with, may have extended him more years into the future. He's been around for a while. He's still only 28, though he turns 29 on July the 3rd. O.J. Howard, I look at it this way. He played at Alabama for Nick Saban. Bill Belichick would be able to pick up the phone and find out exactly what make makes O.J. Howard tick in one conversation with Nick Saban. So before Belichick makes his final decision, that conversation is going to occur and uh, we'll know. Based upon which guy he wants, we'll know how that conversation goes with Nick Saban. If it goes well, it'll be Howard. If it doesn't, it'll be Cameron Brait, uh, the Harvard guy who will be coming back to the Boston area if that's the deal that ultimately occurs. But it's not outlandish. It's not ridiculous. It's one of those things that it makes so much sense. It may make too much sense, and it won't yeah. happen for that reason. Right. No, I, I, I'm i there with you. You're right. And you, you're right about the O.J. Howard point. It's a great point by you. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if Belichick's probably already had that conversation with Nick Saban a few years back and really knows what O.J. Howard is. But, yeah, something to keep an eye on here during the offseason. There was some chatter last year about O.J. Howard maybe being available. Would it shock right. you to know, if this were the truth, that before the second-round pick got sent to the Falcons for Mohamed Sanu, that maybe they called the – Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Jason Light, former Patriots employee, easy pipeline there. Hey, Jason, are you willing to part ways with O.J. Howard? So maybe they've already sniffed around the possibility, Chris. Yeah, no, I think that's real, too. I think there's a lot of teams that probably sniffed around O.J. Howard last year. You're right. That was a very real rumor going around the NFL, Tampa being a little disappointed with what they got out of O.J. Howard the first few years of his career. So, yeah, I, I, I'm with you, Mike. I, I think there's a, a lot of dots to connect here that make a lot of sense. That topic, by the way, sparked by a question on Twitter from at Poundtown10 who wanted to know whether or not it was realistic. As Leroy Insider reported that maybe Rob Gronkowski could be bound for the Buccaneers. Max Hiller, too, has a question about the Buccaneers and Tom Brady. Simple question, Chris. What are the realistic expectations for Brady in Tampa? Well, I think winning football games, taking care of the football at a high greater level than what's been done there the last few years. Like, hey, I don't sit here and go oh, man, Tom Brady's going to throw 40 touchdown passes and five interceptions. You know, I think within this offense, Brady might throw a few more interceptions than we're accustomed to him seeing, you know, accustomed to him, to him throwing, but not by a lot. I mean, it might go from, you know, usually he throws like six, seven, eight interceptions. Now he might throw 10 or 11, and I think you'll see 25 or 26 touchdown passes. But a more aggressive Tom Brady is what I think we can expect. And – 
if the Buccaneers' pass defense can get a little bit better, and I did, they do have young talent, I mean, I think realistic expectations, I, I wouldn't sit here and go, oh, it's crazy if they won the NFC South. You know, I'm favoring the Saints, but I'm not going to sit here like just in shock and awe, like if it's next December and the, and the Bucs are in the lead. No, there's a lot of talent there in that team. So I think playoffs, division winner, uh, and Brady having a really solid year are all realistic things to expect. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. Last year, they were close, even with a guy coughing up 30 interceptions. They, they win a couple games here or there that they lost last year, and all of a sudden, this is a playoff team, and uh, they're going to be a very exciting team this season if there's a season. And Tampa Bay hosting the Super Bowl. Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be a way for oh Tom my Brady gosh. to cap his, his first year post-Patriots getting to the Super Bowl, played in his new home stadium? All right, another question. This one comes from Peter Bruschi, 357, and this relates to the team that Tom Brady left, the Patriots. Is Jared Stidham really ready for primetime, Chris? What do you think? Well, I, I, you know, I can't give that answer, you know, but the, all I can do is go, I really liked what I saw from him in the preseason. I really liked what I saw from him coming out in the draft out of Auburn. He played in a lot of big football games in Auburn. You know, his junior year, you know, they, Auburn was one of the best teams in college football. So from that standpoint, hey, yes, he's ready. And again, you know, Mike, you know, you've heard me say this a lot. I, people in New England, they rave about Jared Stidham. We've heard the players rave about him ever since Tom Brady switched teams. And I know there's a really quiet confidence within the coaching staff, too, and what Stidham brings. So, you know, at the face level, if Bill Belichick thinks he's ready for prime time, then yes, I'm right now going to believe he's ready for prime time as well. Yeah, I agree with you. Look, they know him better than anyone. And when you have Stephon Gilmore, Devin McCourty, Matt Slater going on the record to praise him and and Gilmore and McCourty specifically talking about what Stidham does at practice to help the defense get better. Those are all important signs that now that's a far cry from doing it in practice versus doing it in a game. But when you're when you're going in practice against a great defense like that, that helps accelerate your preparation to face lesser defenses in games that count, Chris. No doubt about it. I mean, there is no doubt. A great scout, time, scout team quarterback who can execute the other team's offense and play the position with a little bit of a style of the team you're going to face, that quarterback this week, there is great value in that. And then, of course, you know, his ability to test the defense itself every day in practice and, you know, not let them fall asleep at the wheel and continue to push and throw big-time throws there – Yes, that makes a great team great. Uh, it really does. It's those little things. And I think Stidham has a lot of physical ability that will pop off the screen to people this year when we watch him in the preseason and regular season if we have one. All right, last topic for today. John Pascal asks, what's the bigger threat to the Chiefs, the Denver Broncos or the L.A. Chargers? Ooh, man. You know, oof, that's a really good one because I look at the Broncos for one of those teams to say watch out for, and I think you agree with me. I mean, you know, again, that defense is really good. Bradley Chubb will be back. They got Jarrell Casey. They traded for A.J. Bouye. You know, there's some things there you look at and go, wow, and, of course, the Drew Locke factor. But I think for right now, I'm going to stick with the Chargers. For right now, I am. Just because it's, I guess there's a little more of a proven commodity there in that defense. They were in the playoffs two years ago. They've improved their offensive line. There are weapons at receiver. You know, Tyrod Taylor certainly not as sexy as Drew Locke to me, but he has taken the team to the playoffs. So, you know, I really like the prospects of what Denver could do. But I think right now, I'd probably give the edge to the Chargers. Yeah, look, I'm excited by what the Denver's can, uh, the Denver Broncos can do with Drew Locke at quarterback. It was great to see it late in the year last year. The defense is going to be better in Vic Fangio's second season. We've talked about how great Pat Shermer could do with that offense. The, the, the arrival of Melvin Gordon, I, I, I think the Broncos are a bigger threat. I, I think that they haven't been all that far off the past couple of years. And, you know, like so many of these other teams, you know, we see a team turn it around quickly. Some of these teams that turn it around and go from non-playoffs to playoffs, they weren't that far out of the playoffs in the first place. And right. you, you make one adjustment here, one adjustment there, and you've bent the, the one-loss record in your favor. And uh, I could see them overcoming the Chargers. I could see them being 
the, the number two team in the division this year, maybe a wild card team, maybe a real threat to the Chiefs. If there's any type of a Super Bowl hangover in Kansas City, I, I'm excited about what the Broncos can do. Now, would I like to see Drew Locke have the benefit of a full offseason program? Yes, but uh, I, I, I th- he, we saw him get thrust into the fray last year after he'd missed all that yeah. time with the wrist injury, and he was fine. He's got that quiet confidence, that looseness that I think you need to have in, in, a, in a potentially great quarterback. He's not freaked out by the moment. He loves it. He embraces it. He relishes it. You were all over him last year as a potential first-round pick. He slid to round two, and uh, I think he's going to prove a lot of people wrong starting this year. Yeah, well, you know, again, he's the perfect example of another guy where if he came out the year before, he's going to be a slam dunk top 20 pick, but he stayed in one more year, the team fell apart, and then everybody viewed him differently because they, we all blame the quarterback for everything. Pass protection, whether the, quarter, you know, the receivers catch the ball. I mean, it's just crazy how we do that. But he's played a lot of football in the SEC, Mike, and you hit on it. You hit on all the right points. He does have a very nice, quiet confidence about him and he does not seem rattled by anything, let alone you and I saw him make a lot of big-time talented throws last year, and I think that should excite Denver. I I mean, listen, I picked the Chargers, but I'm with you. I hear you with a lot of the things you're saying with Denver. Denver is one of those teams I, you know, you got to say watch out for this year in the AFC. Yeah, I mean, either way, uh, the AFC West, now the Chiefs are still clearly the team to beat, but those other three teams, Raiders, Chargers, Broncos, they're going to have a hell of a scrum They're on the rise. potentially for yeah. a wild card berth. And remember, remember, there's an extra wild card berth available this year. So know, there's yeah. three spots for the teams that finish in second or third place. And, I, you know, in theory, and, and, and I'd be stunned if this happens, but we have seen three playoff teams come from a division before. In theory, you could have all four teams from the same division make it to the playoffs. That's crazy. And you're right. I never even thought about that until you just started, you you know, going down that road. And I went, damn, you're right. I mean, if you saw a, a team that kind of dominated their, their, their other divisions and their schedule, and then, you know, kind of were one and one versus each other within their own division, you're right. You might get four teams that are all around, you know, 11 and five, 10 and six, nine and seven, and they all could end up making the playoffs, which is crazy. I hadn't really thought about that yet. It really isn't all that out of the question. If you have everyone right around three and three in the divisional play, that's 10 other games. And if they're playing a weak division in their own conference, because they play all four teams from one of the other divisions in their own conference, a weak division from the other conference, that's eight games, right? You could have all the teams eight and oh, six and two, seven and one, five and three against those two divisions. You have teams that are in position to, to steal not just obviously a division championship, but three wild card spots. I, I'm kind of rooting for that. I kind of want be, to see that happen. It'd be kind of cool. It really would. You know, I'm looking at the, like, hey, look at the AFC South last year. You had Houston at 10 and six, Tennessee at nine and seven, the Colts at seven and nine, you know, the Jaguars at six. And, you know, I'm trying to, you know, just look at teams and go, yeah, I mean, you're right. A few different wins and losses, and all of a sudden, we, you know, again, we could see the very real possibility of eight and eight teams making the playoffs now, too, to where you go, wow, this this really could happen. You know, it's funny how you you trip over these topics when you answer fan questions. The question wasn't even on this, but this is something I think I'm going to write about at PFT because here's the real question. Should the last place team in a division be prevented from going to the playoffs? For That's example, if it would question. be all four, should you say, for the same reason, team that gets first place, Hey, they get they get that home game in the playoffs, even if their record is lesser than a wild card team's. Should you say if you come in last in a four team race, you don't get to the postseason? It's going to go to some other team from some other division, the second place team from one of the other three divisions. I no, I, I think you should get in. I don't care. You know, again, especially if it goes down the scenario we talked about, where you know your interdivision your interdivision games are split but yet you've dominated the other divisions you're playing in the AFC and NFC, you know, you've proven that you're worthy of being in there. And I don't, I don't think that's crazy, man. I mean, you look at a few divisions here. There's a few where you're right. You just take a few wins from the top team and just spread it around the division a little bit. You go, man, it it could be a very real possibility. I mean, the NFC West, if the 49ers, you know, drop just a little bit and then, 
you know, the Arizona Cardinals climb the ladder a little bit, you could have a whole bunch of teams there around 10 and 6, 9 and 7, 11 and 5. I mean, it's, it's very interesting. And let me take a quick look at this. The 49ers this year, they are due to play the teams of the – so this would be all four teams from the NFC West, 49ers, Cardinals, Rams, Seahawks. They play all the teams of the NFC East, which was one of the worst divisions in football last year, and they play all the teams of the AFC East, which is going to be in flux this year. They right. don't have Tom Brady. Who knows who's going to be good out of that division? And you have the best division in football with the Seahawks, the Rams, the 49ers, and the Cardinals. It could happen the first year of this. You could have all four teams from the NFC West take the wild card berths out of the, the NFC. I, 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 I'm I, kind of rooting for I, it. I, I kind of want it to happen. Me too. I want I'm with chaos. you. I think it would be really cool. Yes, it would be cool. I want, I want football chaos. I've had enough other chaos. I, Me too. I have to amend. I have to amend my position that I want chaos. I need to be clear. I want chaos only in the world of football. And look, we appreciate having the opportunity to talk to you all every day. It helps us manage the things that are going on in the real world. And we try to provide you on an ongoing basis, a break from all of that. And uh, hopefully we've done it again today. Chris, great work as always. Enjoy your weekend at home. You need a, you need a break after all the time you've been at home. I, I know it's been hard for you. You did a great job cutting your own hair. I still think you cut your own hair. I would. I did not cut my own hair, but yep, I'm excited for the weekend nonetheless. Three-day weekend, lots of daddy cigars coming my way. Ready to go. Here we go, baby. What are you, what are you going to do, though? Turn your head. What are you going to do? It's getting a little bushy there on the side. What are you going to no, do? It's, bo it's bothering me, like, legitimately, like, to the point where I've actually thought about, man, maybe I should ask my wife just to get the buzzer out and just go for it and see what the hell happens. But I don't think no, I'm, I'm going to do that. To, I'm not that crazy. I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to do something here within the next couple of weeks. It's getting a little shaggy. I'm going to let it go though. I'm not. I mean, you, what can you do? You got do? to. Right. You got to. I can't go to the barber, and the barber ain't coming here. And uh, I don't trust my wife with with uh, scissors in her hands because I'll have a flashback to all the smart ass things I've said over the past six months and wondering <laughs> on whether or not the scissors are going to end up somewhere somewhere other than on my hair. All right, yeah, I think they note, would. <laughs> on that happy note, uh, everybody have a great day. Chris, enjoy your your uh, your few days off, although we know you'll still be working. You'll be studying film, other position groups as the draft approaches, and we'll have Chris back yep. on Monday. We'll see everybody else on Friday for another edition of PFT Live. Enjoy your day. See ya. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.